All right, g'day IB Psychology students. If you're studying the biological approach and you wanna know a great study to use for neurotransmission topic, in this video, I'm gonna tell you my favorite study to use for neurotransmitters. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how you can use this for eight different topics in the course. Right, so some people like Martinez and Kesner uh, with acetylcholine, Fisher's study on dopamine and love, or the one with the monks in the forest and serotonin. I don't like any of those for the IB psychology course. I'll tell you my favorite study is Passimony et al. study, which we can use to explain how serotonin can influence aggression. And in fact, the full title of the study is Effects of Acute Tryptophan Depletion on Prefrontal Amygdala Connectivity While Viewing Facial Signals of Aggression. Now, I must warn you, uh, I'd only be using this study if you're aiming for a six or a seven. It's quite complex, but if you're aiming for a seven, this gives you the depth of of explanation needed that's going to separate your answers from the rest. So what we're explaining here is how serotonin is linked with aggression. And a lot of studies have shown that lower levels of serotonin or serotonin abnormalities are linked with aggression. There are correlational studies that show that uh, as well as um, animal studies. And I would suggest if this study is a little bit complicated for you, then uh, you can use the revision book and use one of those correlational studies. It's a little bit more simple. But Passamoni study, what did they do? Well, to manipulate serotonin, they gave uh, their participants a drink. And this drink depletes levels of tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid that builds serotonin in the brain. So they used 30 healthy individuals and they randomized the procedure. It was repeated measures and they randomized the procedure. One day they would come in and they would drink this drink that depleted tryptophan levels. On another day, they would just drink an ordinary drink. Okay, and then after they drank that, they went into the fMRI machine. And in the fMRI machine, they were shown three different types of faces, angry, sad, and neutral. And while they were viewing these faces, their, their activity in their brain uh, was activated. And the activity they got them to do was just uh, to recognize and to label the type of emotion in those faces. What they found was when participants had lower levels of serotonin, so they drank the tryptophan depletion drink, which reduces serotonin levels in the brain. What they found when they saw angry faces, there was a reduced connection between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. Now that reduced connection didn't happen uh, in the normal serotonin group, in the control group, and also didn't happen when they were looking at sad or neutral faces. Now we can use this to explain aggression. How? Well, there are two important things to remember. One, the amygdala. The amygdala is the center of emotion, right? And it's where, if, when we feel angry, our anger is generated in the emotion. But the prefrontal cortex can downregulate that anger. Our prefrontal cortex, this front part of the brain, is the part of the brain that inhibits our impulsive decision making. So if we feel angry, right? So if someone's uh, an angry face, we're threatened, we have a social threat situation, and we're, we're feeling angry, our prefrontal cortex can say, whoa, 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 hang on, just pump the brakes, don't respond. But this study is suggesting if we have reduced levels of serotonin and we're viewed, we're confronted with an angry face, our amygdala might activate, but our the, the connection is not there with the prefrontal cortex to reduce that activity in the amygdala to, to in inhibit that impulsive reaction. So specifically, this study is explaining impulsive reactive aggression. When we are impulsive, we do it without thinking and we're reacting to someone's, uh, to someone's threat, right? And that's what that angry face in the fMRI is showing. Now, why do I like this study so much? Well, there's a few reasons. One, it gives us a really detailed explanation of why serotonin influences aggression. That level of explanation that I just gave you, I think is pretty easy to provide as long as you know about the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex, which are two parts of the brain I really feel like all students of psychology should know about. Uh, and if you can explain, I mean, it's a pretty easy link with aggression, right? The amygdala is where the anger comes from, the negative emotion. The prefrontal cortex, the connection is disrupted, so our prefrontal cortex can't inhibit that impulsive reaction, so we might act without thinking. We might react aggressively without thinking about our consequences. It's pretty straightforward. I think most students can grasp that. Another reason I really like this study is that the methodology is very common, right? We, we alter physiology in some way, then we show those different types of faces, and we measure the, the activity in the brain. All right, so let's look at some of the strengths of the study. Okay, so it was a randomized, so they, um, they counterbalance the order. So some people came in with the tryptophan one day, some people uh, came in with the control group. So they repeated measures and they, they randomized the order that they got the um, samples. They were healthy, healthy controls, so there was no existing brain abnormalities or issues there that might have confounded the results. Uh, all participants signed an informed consent form, uh, and it was a double blind. So neither the researcher or the participant um, knew which condition they were going to be in when they were, and the researchers when they were analyzing the data didn't know which group they were in. So if, we, if you need to evaluate this for an essay, there's the points there. Uh, the, some of the limitations, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what the limitations are, but you can think about this for yourself. A couple of things to consider. If you're using this to explain aggression, and again, only do this in an essay, not a short answer response. If you're using this to explain aggression, consider um, this is only really explaining one type of aggression. 
right? Is that that valuable? Now, this is also explaining aggression in healthy participants. Could that be an issue as well? Also, this is based on fMRI findings and it's an angry face that they're responding to. Now, it's quite a big leap to say, this is what your brain did when you saw a static angry face while you're laying stationary in an fMRI machine to then going out and saying why someone might at a workplace, you know, might, might pick up a hammer and throw it at their colleague and kill them, right? That's actually based on a true incident that happened uh, recently in New Zealand. Um, okay, so we, we, we might be making quite a leap there and think about what might be some issues with, with that generalizability. Now, how do we apply this to eight different topics? Well, we've already shown how it can show the uh, reduced levels of serotonin might explain aggressive behavior. It also can be used to show the benefit of using fMRI. We can get a deeper explanation of connections between neurotransmitters and behavior by looking at how they influence the brain. Uh, we can also use this with uh, techniques and the brain and behavior, right? So if you ask a general question about the brain and behavior, uh, you, can, you can use it there. Research methods, this is a true experiment and it highlights the benefit of a true experiment. We can control those variables like I just talked about the strengths and we can measure the effect on the dependent variable, in this case, the brain activity. Uh, it could also be about ethical considerations. Informed consent here is really important, right? You're going to manipulate people's serotonin. Are you going to tell them about that? How much information should you give them? You don't want to distort the results. So uh, ethical considerations are relevant here as well. Um, it can also be used to explain agonists. Now, uh, serotonin could be uh, classified as an endogenous or a naturally occurring agonist. So it's binding to the postsynaptic neuron and there it might be having an effect. So here we can talk about uh, serotonin as an example of endogenous agonist there as well. Now serotonin is also an inhibitor in neurotransmitters. So you could use this study to talk about inhibitory neurotransmitters. And in fact, the researchers even conclude that maybe they got these results because the serotonin, the low levels of serotonin was disrupting uh, or inhibiting activity in um, inhibitory neurons in the amygdala. And that could be causing the disruption. You could also talk about this with neural networks. Now, if you're asked to explain how neural networks are formed, um, possibly not, but if you're just asked a question about neural networks, well, the study is showing that low levels of serotonin can disrupt neural networks between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. And you can explain the significance of that, right, in regards to aggression. And so I, I think I think there we have it, right? There are eight different topics you could use this study for. On the surface, it does seem quite complex, but if you take the time to explain it, um, you'll get a really good uh, explanation of the study. And like I said, one of the biggest things missing from short answer responses is an explanation, actually answering the question. Most students, when they're asked, explain how one neurotransmitter influences human behavior. They're gonna say something like, one neurotransmitter that influences human behavior is, is um, I don't know, dopamine, and it can influence love. Fisher's study, brrr, and they get into Fisher's study. They don't actually explain how or why that neurotransmitter is connected with a specific behavior. Now, my goal in teaching psychology is, I don't want you to remember all the studies. That's only part of it. The studies come second to the explanation, the understanding. And from the study, I love the study because it shows the connection between serotonin, the brain, and aggression. And you can explain those three things. Serotonin is linked with aggression because it influences the activity in the prefrontal cortex and amygdala, which could explain impulsive reactive aggression. Right, there we have it. That's my favorite study for the neurotransmitter topic. Uh, if you like this, if you found it was helpful, leave a, a, a like or a comment because, uh, and tell me what topics would you like me to tell you my favorite study for. All right, good luck uh, studying for your exams. Hope you go well.